Welcome to the fourth video in this series on using Substance 3D Modeler on desktop. This video will be going over the remaining sculpting tools, Build Up, Crease, Inflate, and Paint. The rest of the tools, similar to Smooth, will be mostly used to make smaller changes to the clay's surface, and all of them default as Surface Snap. First here is the Build Up tool, found here, or by pressing B. As the name suggests, you can get a layering effect over the surface of the clay. The palette gives you control over the hardness of the brush, and tab, like with other tools, quick swaps between add and remove. Use buildup to make more gradual changes to your surface form, or make subtle texture. Next up is the crease tool, which is a sub-tool to the buildup tool, found here. Crease will pull up and pinch a ridge on the clay surface. The resolution of the clay surface will make a noticeable difference here, and you may want to move a little slower to get a smoother result. Strength can be changed in the palette, and you can quick swap between pinching up and creasing in with tab. The crease tool is great for emphasizing areas that need to be pinched, or for getting sharper edges. Next in line is the inflate tool, found here. It will continuously inflate the surface when the tool preview comes in contact with clay. You can change various settings, such as the intensity, or switch to the deflate mode. Press tab to quick swap between inflate and deflate. At the bottom here is the paint tool, but you'll need to change the color for this one, using the color picker here in the corner. There is various shapes to choose from, as well as settings such as hardness and rate. This was mentioned in the first video on sculpting tools, but all sculpting tools can be used in any placement mode. As an example, let's switch to gizmo for paint. It behaves now more like a precision paintbrush. If you want to switch back to the original color or copy another, you can use the eyedropper option here in the color picker. Just point at the surface you want to copy the color from and left click. All of these tools have been used on a per layer basis. You can also use them across different layers. This is the case for all sculpting tools aside from clay. Let's switch back to assembly by double clicking away and switch to the erase tool with E with nothing selected. Notice there's no longer focus on editing one layer, so the Erase tool can actually affect all layers at this level. As can Paint and Warp, as an example. You can control which layers are affected this way through selection. If you select a handful of layers, then switch to a sculpting tool, all other layers will darken and be unaffected. Only the ones in focus will be affected. Again, this works for all sculpting tools except the clay tool. Remember that switching to the clay tool with nothing selected, there is no layer to put the clay into, so you're instead put into a state to quickly make a new one. The erase tool has a couple other modes as well. Up here at the top, there's split and crop. These all behave as if the single setting is in use. Split will take anything the red preview is covering and split it away into its own layer. This is useful as a quick way of splitting up one layer into multiple, especially if you accidentally built everything into one layer and wanted to move things independently. Crop will take anything the red preview is covering and crop that layer to only the overlap. While this can be used as a quick Boolean operation, it's useful for cleaning up a layer that might have other bits floating around. That will wrap up part four in this series on using Modeler on Desktop. If you'd like to learn how to use Modeler in VR, much of the functionality is the same, but there's also a separate playlist for VR, so feel free to check that one out. Link is listed down below in the video description. These first four videos should get you started on all of the basics you need for navigating Modeler and its tools. The videos after this will focus on one feature or concept, and it will be covered for both desktop and VR together. So next up in part five, we'll dive into understanding resolution.